back to the Value Driven Investor Podcast, where we forge value-driven investors on a mission to live life on their terms. No matter where you have come from or where you are going, becoming a value-driven investor is in all our best interests because becoming financially free allows us to focus on what matters most, fulfilling our purpose. Our community of value-driven investors is committed to showing you the way. With the support of this community, you are sure to reach your goals. For all of us in the value-driven investor community, there is no greater gift than the gift of giving. Because together, anything is possible. I want to talk about how I ever came up with the value-driven investor community. The idea, where did it come from? What does it mean? How does it even work? Those are great questions because those are questions that there were like seeds planted in my head. And for years and years, I thought about it. And I thought about it as a real estate investor going through the process over and over and over and over. And as a person who really likes to give back, I thought about it like, man, how would I teach my kids to become a real estate investor? If I wanted to give them everything I knew, how would I put it into a book? How would I put it into a training manual? How would I deliver to them so that they could learn about everything that their dad's doing? And if they wanted to do it, they could. Those were the seeds I planted in my head for years and years and years. And now, I finally come up with the answers and the plan to do it. And that's the value-driven investor. Now, the value-driven investor is a key statement that I've brought into my life about five or six years ago. And value-driven has so many different meanings. And value-driven investor is an identity. But for the value-driven, there's two different things that I really want to clarify right now in the very beginning. We spell value-driven investor two different ways. Value-driven investor, all separate words. And that's about going out and finding value in things. Meaning, what does something cost? I want to buy it low and sell it high. I want to buy it at a discount or buy it in disarray, add value to it by fixing it up, improving it, and then be able to sell it at a higher price. I want to find value in a product that maybe is being sold at a discount wholesale, but then I can take it and sell it at a retail price. That is value-driven investor, separate words. Now, the other way you're gonna see us spelling value-driven investor is value-driven investor. Why? Because when you add the hyphen, what that means is, is that you're a value-driven person. Principles, values, how you look at the world, how you treat others. Because here at the value-driven investor, personally, I've had some things happen in my life that have knocked me down and I've had to find ways to get up. One of them, my daughter Shanley having type one diabetes and I found a way through JDRF and our organization, Team Sugar Shea, which you can check out at teamsugarshea.com. I found a way and something that I don't know if I would have ever found if it wasn't for my daughter and for her circumstances and now our family circumstances, I don't know if I would have found this calling. And that's why I added the hyphen. Because value hyphen driven investor is about principles, it's about beliefs. It's about what do you stand for? Who are you? How are you gonna treat others? And in doing so, how are others gonna treat you? And that's why the value driven investor, that's why the name, because it means something. So then after that, I always thought, man, life on your terms. I can tell you this, (laughs) from the second I was born, 
and you can ask my mother about this, it was life on my terms. I think I drove my parents nuts. I remember running and my mom will laugh about the story and also want to kill me at the same time. But as a young kid, countless times, my mom would bring me to Target or a retail store and countless times I would run away from her and I would hide underneath the clothes racks. And then once I realized that she couldn't find me and she walked away and I could hear her voice go away, I would sneak out of the clothes racks, I walk up to the information booth, and this is back before cell phones, and I would say, hey, my mom lost me, you're gonna need to intercom her and tell her where I am. And I did it so many times that the people at the information booth actually knew me by name. And it was a game for me. And my mom would come over every single time, fired up. What are you doing, Tim? You're giving me a heart attack. You gotta quit doing that. And for me, that that was me. Because I always wanted to be creative. I always wanted to do things on my terms. And my whole life, I've lived it that way. That's been a good thing. And at times, it's been a bad thing. It's got me in trouble. And it's allowed me to be the entrepreneur that I am today. So when I came up with the name Value Driven Investor, the next thing that came to my mind that was authentically me, and I feel like there's so many other entrepreneurs and investors that can relate. It was all about, man, I just want to live a life on my terms, my way. That's why the Value Driven Investor, life on your terms. Once I realized that life on your terms was possible and I came up with a plan on how to execute that, which for me was through real estate investing and being an entrepreneur and investing in general, because I've invested in a lot of other things other than real estate, but real estate has been my true authentic passion and the thing that I've had the most success doing. But that's why I called it the value driven investor because I wanna be more than just a real estate investor. I wanna be a well-rounded investor with a real estate focus. But the next thing is after life on our terms, I was like, well, what's after that? And I dug deep and you guys, this took me years, years to figure out. And it was like something that you knew was there inside you, but you didn't know what it was. And you couldn't define what it was. And I only discovered a way to even describe what it is recently in the last five, six, seven years of my life. And what it was that is burning inside of me is a never ending desire to become my best self to reach my full potential. And quite honestly, that's why I launched this podcast. That's why I launched The Value Driven Investor because that's just another step in reaching my full potential. Did I want to do this? No. Did it feel like I was up in the plane and I had to jump and was I freaking out? Yeah. And we're in the beginning. I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm still nervous. I'm still wondering, is anybody gonna show up? Does anybody even care about what I'm trying to do? But when you're trying to become your best self, you're gonna ask your, you're gonna question yourself and you're gonna ask yourself these questions all the time. Does anybody even care? Am I even making progress? What does it mean to be my best self? And I've done it my whole life. But I feel like to be your best self means that you never stop growing. You never stop pushing yourself to do and be the best you can. Purpose. To become your best self, you need to find purpose. What is that? (laughs) I know, I know, what is that? For me, purpose is helping others. For me, purpose is leading by giving. 
for me, purpose is treating others the way I want to be treated. And then times, the way they want to be treated. Purpose and leadership is about coming in last and putting everybody else first. Is that hard? <laughs> it's probably the hardest thing you'll ever do. It's the hardest thing I've ever done. It's still the hardest thing I have to do. Because being a leader is not about being first. And <laughs> one of the best analogies for leadership that I've ever heard is if you watch a pack of wolves. There's one wolf that's always leading, maybe out a little bit of farther ahead. And if you looked at a picture, you'd be like, oh, that's the leader. That one in the front, look at him, you can just tell. He's leading the pack and everybody's following. <laughs> but what I realized and what I learned is that in a wolf pack, the leader isn't first. The leader isn't in the front. The leader is in the back. Because if the pack gets attacked from behind, he'll be there to defend it. If someone falls behind and can't keep up, he'll be, there, he'll be the one to pick them up and help them forward. In a wolf pack, the leader's in the back. Man, I love that. It's just so true. It's so true. That's what the Value Driven Investor is all about. That's what becoming your best self is all about. And that's what this community is all about. Is it a huge thing to live up to? Yeah, probably the reason why I'm scared as hell to have to try to live up to it. But I can't become my best self. I can't reach my full potential if I don't try. And that's why I'm on today. Because I'm trying. And I want you to join me. In our community, we're gonna offer new opportunities. We're gonna offer new strategies. We're gonna have guest speakers. We're gonna talk about deals. We're gonna hopefully have deals. We're gonna create fresh new resources and strategies through our network and through everyone in this community. Everything you need to become a successful real estate investor is what we hope to bring you in the Value Driven Investor community. Now, the next thing I thought about was if you're trying to get somewhere, usually it's best to have a map. I think we all can understand that because how often do we pull up our Google Maps, our GPS, and say, hey, I'm looking to get over here and we punch in our goal and it tells us exactly how to get there. So I thought about it. I said, well, if I think about it that way, what is the map I can provide somebody if their goal is to become financially free, if their goal is life on their terms, if their goal is to become their best self? Well, I came up with four different phases. And these are four essential phases. And these are four phases that literally I've lived through and I am still living through today. Phase number one is the survival phase. You discover your true why by following your passion and embracing your journey. That's what leads you to life on your terms. But in the survival phase, that's where money means the most. Because when you're in the survival phase, it's like Maslow's hierarchy of needs. At the end of the day, you need food, you need shelter, you need clothing, you need money to have all of it. That's the survival phase. We've all started there. Many of us have gone back there and some of us have never left there the survival phase. So Murph, how do I get out of the survival phase? What's next? Well, on the journey, there's step number two. Step number two is the thrive phase. In the thrive phase, you execute your purpose-driven plan. You're growing mentally, 
physically, and financially by leveraging your value-driven investor relationships. Those relationships allow you to build a life where your money works for you, not you working for money. See, that's the thrive phase. Now, many people will hit the thrive phase and they'll think they made it. I'm retired. Life is fantastic. But the reality is the thrive phase, you're still trying to figure out how you can get money working for you and not you working for money. Because there's a lot of people out there that make great money, doctors, lawyers, attorneys, real estate agents, salespeople, upper management, C-suite. The problem is the second they stop working, the second they stop getting that check from their W-2 job or their self-employed job, the money stops coming in and they stop thriving. And at some point, they might go back from thriving to surviving. And we don't want that. We want to move forward. So how do I move forward, Murph? Well, you start at the survive phase, phase one. You move to the thrive phase, phase two, and you get money working for you and not you working for money. Then you move to phase three, which is the invest phase. The invest phase is where you build assets that earn you secure cash flow, providing you stability and financial freedom. See, that's the kicker. It's so simple, but it's so hard. Cash flow. Cash flow equals financial freedom. How? That is the question. And that's the question that we want to answer in this community. That's the thing, the value we want to deliver in this value-driven investor community. How? How do I get financial freedom? How do I find cash flow? How do I make it happen? How do I reach phase three, the invest phase? But we're not done yet. There's four phases to every great map. And the last phase in the value-driven investor journey is legacy, phase four. Once you're you've left the survival phase, it's like a weight comes off your shoulder. Once you've left the thrive phase, it's as if the doors have opened to all your possibilities. Once you have mastered the invest phase, which I can tell you right now, I have not fully mastered the invest phase. Am I investing? Am I an investor? Do I have cash flow? Do I have financial freedom? Yes, but have I mastered it? No, but once you master the invest phase or have a good grip on it, all of a sudden you look at yourself in the mirror and you say, why am I here? What's my purpose? And see, that's what legacy is all about. Purpose. And I truly believe because I'm a person that is a deep thinker, I truly believe that humans have been put on this earth for a purpose. And it's our life's work to figure out what that purpose is. When we find it, we find joy and happiness. When we don't, we find depression and anxiety. So if you don't think legacy is important, and maybe even the most important thing that we could talk about in the Valley Driven Investor community, well, then maybe this community isn't for you. Because what legacy means is to grow, protect, and transfer your legacy for future generations, to leave an everlasting impact on the world, like on your kids, on your extended family, on your community. Those are the four phases of the Valley Driven Investor. Survive, phase one. Thrive, phase two. Invest, phase three. Legacy, phase four. That is the map. That is how you become a value-driven investor. 
All right, I got it, Murph. But once I join the value driven investor community, then what? What's in it for me? <laughs> Great question. I never thought you'd ask. What's in it for you in the beginning when you join the community at the very beginning, which is the survival phase? What's in it for you is direct access. Direct access to me and direct access to Bob Grant and the other advisors that we will be putting together to support our community. When you get direct access, that means that we will be on a live Zoom call to answer your questions on deals, on financing, on how you're gonna make it happen, on how you're gonna go through the different phases, on how you're gonna get deals, on how you're gonna become financially free, on who to talk to, on where to go, everything. You have direct access every Tuesday, 11 Central Standard Time, a value-driven investor advisor will be on the call and they will be ready to answer your questions. On top of that, you'll also see live deals in action. What are we doing? What problems are we coming across? What solutions do we have for those problems? Are we making money or are we losing money? How are we finding these contractor relationships? How are we managing our subcontractor relationships? How are we getting these banking relationships? These hard money lender relationships? Everything. Just think about that for a second. If you had one place you could go and ask any question you need whenever you needed it, and you had someone that's probably already solved the problem so you didn't have to worry about it, do you think that's worth a cup of coffee every single day? We're also gonna have guest speakers. We're also gonna share the stories of other community members who are winning, who have jumped out of the plane, who have had success, and who want to share their journey with you because at the end of the day, we lead by giving. And there's no better feeling on this earth. No amount of money can replace the feeling of helping someone else succeed and reaching their full potential. And that's what it's about. If you feel the same way, this community is for you. If you don't feel the same way, then maybe this community isn't right for you. Because if you're not willing to share your successes, then you're alone. If you're willing to share your successes and your failures, and realize that they're both wins, then this community is for you. And you might be one of our guest speakers to share your story. The other thing we wanna provide is a resource library. The internet has almost everything you could possibly imagine. But the big question that we all ask ourselves is, how do I know this will really work? Or is it just some scam? some hocus pocus somebody put out there. There's one thing we've all learned as human beings. Trust is earned. Trust is earned through consistency and congruency. The human instinct is always watching for you to go against what you're saying. Is always watching for that trend of what you said and what you do. One slip and your trust is lost. That's why this community. For 17 years of my life, I have dedicated myself to earning people's trust. I have held myself accountable to making promises and fulfilling those promises. Now, I'm human. I'm not gonna tell you that I've never made a mistake. I've made a ton of mistakes. I'm not gonna tell you that I've never told somebody I was gonna get something done and didn't make it happen. Of course I've fallen on my face. We've all fallen on our face. But I can tell you my heart is in the right place. I can tell you that I've never genuinely told somebody I would do something and then 
intentionally deceived them because I couldn't live with myself because that's not who I want to be because that's why I added the hyphen in value driven investor. We all hold ourselves accountable to the standards that we want to be judged by. If you can't be consistent with yourself, if you can't be self-aware enough to understand what you're really doing to affect others, then others will let you know through their actions. These are just a couple of the things that you're going to receive when you join this community, this exclusive community. And we're excited. And we hope that you visit our webpage, valuedriveninvestor.com, and we hope that you sign up. But if what I've said right now doesn't resonate with you, if it doesn't feel right, then I don't think you should sign up. I don't think this community is for you because this community is not for everyone. It's kind of like the Navy SEALs. At the end of the day, how many people actually become a Navy SEAL? Very, very few. But at the end of the day, how many people try? Not too many because it just doesn't feel right. But if you're one out there where you just have that burning desire and what I've said resonates with you, and you know that when you step at the edge of that plane, you're gonna jump. That's not a question. Kind of like my boy, Bob Grant. I never questioned for a second if he was jumping out of the plane when he asked me about real estate investing. That's the reason why I asked him to be a co-host on the podcast because Whenever I've ever asked Bob Grand, hey, bud, can you do this for me? Can you do this with me? Can I depend on you? He's like, I'm in. I'm there. You can depend on me. And every single time, I've been able to. If you're like that, then this community is for you. Because I think if we can put together enough people like that, anything is possible. Thanks for listening to the Value Driven Investor Podcast, where we lead by giving. For more information about our community and what's new, visit valuedriveninvestor.com. The Value Driven Investor Podcast was produced by Digital Legend Media in Minneapolis. Build your legend, digitallegendmedia.com.